Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us say amen to the mighty choir that is behind us. Amen. Amen. Young people. Amen. Children. Let us say amen to the musicians. Amen. Let us say amen to the dice. Amen. And uh, if you would permit me to be real brief in recognizing the protocol, just recognizing Dr. Black, the great leader of this great church, of the African Methodist just the Church, Mr. Black, to the clergy team, and to the stewards, trustees, and ushers, and my sisters, all of the fine visitors from all parts of this U.S. of A. that are uh, represented here. We are delighted to see you here today and very grateful in our hearts that you are here. I'm going to try to be somewhat brief. I know that your agenda is somewhat busy, but uh, we want to talk to these ushers and want to talk basically to all of us. Uh, Eternal God, our Father, please energize me. Yes, yes, yes. Guide me. Yes, love you. Direct me. Yes. Speak to me. Yes. That I might speak to this lovely waiting congregation. Yes, Lord you. And I give you the praises and the glory. Yes. I do recognize a number of clergy that are present in the audience, and God bless you and never smile upon you. We'd like to uh, very briefly come from the Second Corinthian. Second Corinthian and emphasis on the 12th chapter, verses 7. Second Corinthians, from chapter verses seven through nine. The uh, seventh verse says, "Unless I should be exalted above measures by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a measure of Satan to buffet me. Unless I exalt above measure." Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that I might, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I want to talk today. Uh, with the uh, emphasis on the thorn in the flesh, that I would like to go just you to take a mental walk back with me and look at the Apostle Paul. Many of you have had the wonderful privilege of studying the life of the Apostle Paul. Young people, Paul was not a tall person. And he recognized that that wasn't totally it. He would not have been able to play on the football team. No one, uh, very rarely, would he have been selected on the basketball team. They wanted the tall, robious, strong people. But uh, some people recognize that that is not all of it. 
That young man, young people, was a genius. If you would have had the privilege to just observe him in the classroom, he was, uh, he probably, if it were such thing as an A plus, a brilliant mind. So sometimes, young people, we have hang up as to what we don't have. Sometimes we need to put emphasis on what God gave us. His dad made sure that he was taught by the real scholars of his time and one of the personality of his. Private tutor. And Paul was a brilliant man. Uh, not only did he have his sharpness, the Bible tells us that he had a thorn in the flesh. So, this was not the, and he talked very rarely about it. Uh, and uh, we're grateful that he shared with us about his situation. So I'm saying to you ushers, take what God has given you. In the words of Martin Luther King, the late Dr. King, if you're going to be a custodian, be the best custodian that has ever existed, that no one before and no one ever after would be able to do better than you did. Okay. He talked about the street sweepers. Whatever you do, do it with all of your might. Do it with all of your strength. Be an usher. You will set the pace for the church when a stranger walks in your church and you are there. Here is a program. Let me lead you. Or let me take you to the seat. Be an usher. Be an usher. You not only ushering for Ebenezer, you are ushering for a God that is bigger than Ebenezer. The Apostle Paul was a courageous man. He got on the wrong road at one time. He got so moved until he tried to stop God's church. That's right. And one day, he was on the road to Damascus. God said that uh, I control the sun, I control the heat during the summer, I, I, I determine what the temperature is going to be. If it's going to be over 100, I determine it. I determine when the rain comes. All right. All right. So he had a light to shine. Mm -hmm. So bright until it blind Paul and you, you can hear him communicating with God, Lord, Lord, what will 
What do you want me to do? And God told him, go on to the master. Tell the people the wages of sin is death. Tell the people that the gift of God is eternal life. Tell the people that God lives because he lives in my soul. So Paul went like the Lord told him to do. And, uh, but he still had, he still had a thought in his flesh. But I, I, I'm here to say what is, ask what is your thought? Maybe it a great sorrow. Maybe it's a bad temple. Maybe you weren't able to get over a problem that you have dealt with for years. And maybe it's just a, a, a feeling bad about yourself. Thorn. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what your thorn may be. Uh, uh, but Paul had a thorn represent every affliction. His soul thrown in the flesh changed the philosophy. If you live right, you will be healthy. And uh, I've known so many people that have been strong Christians and illnesses occur to them. So that is not true there. But uh, you're not living right just for that. You're living right because you want to live right for God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Think of how God people have suffered thorns. Job uh, was a martyr, an upright man, a strong man, a leadership man, a man with things all around him. And one day the devil attacked him. And he had skin cancer. And his friends came and looked at him and walked away and shook their heads. And Job was able to say that I am not, not, not going to give up because the Lord gave it. And the Lord take it away. Bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it. Be the name of the Lord. Moses, when God told him to go down in Egypt and tell Pharaoh that I have had enough of my people suffering, I have heard. Remove my thorn. Yes. 
The law said no. no. The third time he went to the Lord and said, Lord, All right. please, yeah. please, please, please remove that throne. All right. The Lord said no. Mm -hmm. He said, whatever your condition is. All right. I can take you. No. If the doctors can't help you, I can take you. All right. Yes, sir. If your family read you off the list, I can take you. Yes. Yes. As you are. Amen. The Lord said, Paul, I got some for you. All right. My grace, my grace, my grace is sufficient. My grace will help you when you die. All right. My grace will help you when you weep. All right. John Newton said, "Amazing." Oh, yeah. 